So Lectora Inspire is essentially an authoring tool that gives you the ability to create and assemble engaging and interactive course content. How it differs from our other flagship products is that it's actually a bundling of tools that can help you create e-learning that includes images, video, and audio, and we'll talk about those tools here in a minute. With Lectora Inspire 16, we, the big release that we had that was with uh, this particular version was around responsive course design, or RCD, and that is essentially the ability to build ones and deliver to multiple devices. And it also helps with the ability for M learning and uh, learning on the go. We do also give you the ability to test and review content with the external subject matters with one of the tools in the bundle. Lectora Inspire and in general publishes to AICC SCORM XAPI or the web. So no matter how you're trying to get your content to your learner, we've got you covered. The most common that we normally hear about is SCORM 1.2 in 2004. So those are included in that lumping of categories. You can also create assessments and surveys with a variety of question types and we'll talk about that later in the training. First of all, let's go over the tools that are included with Lectora Inspire. So the first being Snagit. This is actually a tool by TechSmith, and it's a screen capturing tool that gives you the ability to capture your screen, uh, take video recordings, and also edit the image as necessary. On a scale from really, really simple to really, really complex, Snagit falls right in the middle, so you can really get away with a lot of video editing um, on a lower to medium range of difficulty for your course development. Also included is Camtasia, also by TechSmith, and it's a screen recording and video editing tool. It's pretty robust as well and gives you the ability to record video and then uh, add um, elements to it such as callouts and transitions. There's also an eLearning Brother subscription included with the Lectora Inspire license purchase. And with the eLearning Brothers content, also known as the Inspire tools, you get Lectora, the access to the Lectora template library, cutout people library, and interaction builder so you can add content into your course without having to look all over the internet. With all of our Lectora products, you do have access to our product named Review Link, and it's a collaboration tool that allows you to review content with subject matter experts. It's really nice because you can actually involve external reviewers, so you don't necessarily have to give someone access to your learning management system if you don't need to. And we'll talk about that more in detail a little bit later. Also included, in, we have some additional media editing tools. So again, you don't really have to leave Lectora if you don't want to. There's an audio editor and a video editor. So now let's go ahead and talk about the product features that are in Lectora, and we can kind of get into the development of a course and talk about uh, what exactly Lectora can do for you. So like I said, the big new feature for uh, six, version 16 is responsive course design, also known as RCD. And essentially in three clicks, you can convert your existing non-responsive titles to RCD, giving you the ability to share content across desktop, tablet, and mobile views. So when you're building a course, you would go ahead and add your content into your page and start off on desktop view. This is what you're probably going to be the most comfortable with and the most familiar with. From there, we're going to push on out and go from essentially the largest screen size to the smallest screen size to make sure everything fits. So once we have that selected, we can go ahead and get into Tablet Portrait, and you can see that the image, uh, that the screen changes, and you might need to do a little bit of adjusting. Usually tablets, tablets aren't too far off and you don't need to do too much work. And you can also view it if they decide to rotate the device and view something in landscape as well. Where it gets down to the nitty gritty is really where you get into mobile, and that's mostly because you lose a lot of screen real estate when you're building. So you can see that a lot of the images have been scaled down, the text is a little bit smaller, you might need to deal with a little bit more placement, and this is really where a lot of people expect these swiping and finger touching um, motions to be in place. With RCD, you can actually take your content and scale it down into a particular view. So for example, this particular uh, T image is um, one that was included in the original image, but now when we go over to port, uh, foam portrait, you can actually see that there's orange adorners around the image. And what that means is that the image was scaled down and is specifically for the 
the mobile view. So when the course is called upon and the learner is accessing the content on a mobile device, it bypasses the desktop, bypasses the tablet, and immediately goes into the portrait view and is remembered. So anytime you make any adjustments, um, these will change and you'll also see some changing up front or up on top as well. There's also text scaling, so you don't need to worry about changing your font size. You can actually scale it down as you go if you need to. When you're getting ready to create a course for the first time in Lectora Inspire, and pretty much any time you open Lectora Inspire in general, you're going to be greeted with our Getting Started page, and it's really where you can start um, making decisions about course development. We do offer some basic uh, abilities in the Create a New Title section, this blue section right here. The first being the New Blank Title. So New Blank Title is when you can develop a new title from scratch. Essentially, everything is blank. And um, for me personally, that's a little bit overwhelming. But for other people, it's a great process for them to go ahead and start with. You can also do the same by creating a new responsive title that's completely blank and working with it as well. One of the things that we recommend is that you actually take advantage of our design wizard. The design wizard is a place where you can set up um, content on three different tabs and then go ahead and get started on your course relatively easily. On the first, you have your title options where you're going to have your title name and also select where you want your, your files to go. By default, Lectora creates a My Titles folder in your My Documents folder and stores everything there. However, you do have the ability to place it in other folders if needed. You would go ahead and select whether or not you want your title to be published to a learning management system or learning record system. That does change some of the functionality within the course just to make sure that uh, any content that's published out to AICC or SCORM is compliant and recognized by your learning management system. You can also select at this time whether or not you want the content to be responsive. You'll then go in and select the size and theme. If you select responsive, you don't really need to worry about this, but for PCs, uh, tablets and phones, we do have some screen options for you that will um, work really well. You can also select a theme at this time, and a theme is essentially a grouping of um, items that you place into a course to give your course a certain look and feel. We have some already included in Lectora, or you can create your own and use it continuously. From there, you're going to go ahead and select, enter in the organization of your course. Hopefully, before getting into Lectora, you have somewhat of an idea of what you want to build, so you're going to have a storyboard um, or something of the sort to base your content on. From here, you can enter in pages or chapters and pages, and then uh, go ahead and rename them if necessary. Otherwise, you can actually rename it in the course as, or in Lectora as well. And you can add a test to the end of the title. So when we go ahead and select Build It, you're going to see that this pop-up appears, and this is essentially a course started. You can see that we already have the next button, we already have the pages that we need, and all we need to do is add content from there. So it really speeds up your development process. You can also have My Templates or templates that have been saved that you can continuously open, or you can access templates online if you are interested in what's being shared. One of the other nice things to do if you're working on a storyboard is to import PowerPoint. Essentially, you're going to find your PowerPoint on your desktop or other folder and then select OK. Select the name and location for your title. And then select some import options. This is really important to make sure that the quality of the content comes in smoothly, uh, especially the title size that can kind of make things a little wonky. And you can also include the transitions that you had in your presentation or not and select the preferred format of your images just to make sure everything comes in and doesn't look all fuzzy. So what you're seeing on the screen right now is an example of a simple PowerPoint uh, template or presentation that's been um, imported into the course. You can see that on this page the title and text has also been included onto the page and you have the basic um, information from the slide master as far as uh, the visuals go. That is one thing to really be careful of when you're importing PowerPoints is to make sure that your slide master layer is cleaned up and is, is looking exactly the way that you want it to because Lectora looks at that and really bases a lot of decisions um, on your content. So if you have that all cleaned up and you do the import, then you should be good to go. 
You also have the ability to import Lectora Online packages. Lectora Online is our software as a service option. And if you, by any chance, have Lectora Inspire at your company and Lectora Online as well, you can kind of share those files back and forth. If you're working on projects continuously, you can go ahead and open them in your recent titles or at any time browse and try and find the file on your computer as well. Here is also a great place when you're getting started to access learning resources in the bottom left hand corner. You have video tutorials that you can watch to get you up and running in Lactora. There's also a click and learn title which I highly recommend you watch or participate in I should say. It's another course created in Lectora just like this one except it kind of goes through the development process and gives you a little bit more robust information than this demonstration does. On top of that it is interactive so you do get a chance to kind of play around and click buttons. You can take a quick tour of our product which just kind of shows you around um, and highlights some of the things that you may need to know. We have sample titles and how-to titles that you can download and actually play with. Uh, you can try and reverse engineer, look at some examples to try and get some inspiration, um, anything along those lines. And we also do have access to the Trivanus community with one click. Like I said, I'm the community manager. Highly recommend that you join and we'll talk about that a little bit later. You can also access the Information Center. Highly recommend that you have this, um, have this ability to get into this the Information Center at any time. It's essentially our, our user guides in an online form. I personally like the uh, PDF version, but the online version is good as well because then you don't have to flip back and through uh, programs. But the Information Center will, will literally tell you anything and everything you need to know about Lectora. So if you're wondering um, how exactly you do something, all you need to do is get in there, type your question, uh, use a couple keywords, and you'll find some information and be able to get started. You can also see the latest news with our, our um, product. This is linked into our blog, so if you want to pop out there and read um, the latest articles, you can view that content as well. There's, there also will be product news if it, there's anything that needs to be shared with you. With Lectora Inspire, you're also going to see this launch section, and this is where you can launch your Lectora Inspire tools. So like I said, the Lectora Inspire comes with ReviewLink, Camtasia, Snagit, and the eLearning Brothers subscription is referred to as the Inspire tools. And at any point in time, you can go ahead and contact our support team as well in the bottom right-hand corner. Once you get started in a course, it's really important that you familiarize yourself um, with the layout and make sure that you're comfortable with the interface. Lectora essentially has four main areas that you're going to need to become familiar with. The most important, or the one that you're probably going to use the most, eh, I guess you'd, you'd probably use these three the most, but one of the more important ones is the ribbon area. And the ribbon area is essentially where you can access objects, tools, and properties. And there are six different um, tabs that you can access on top of that. So your home is going to be essentially where you can have access to frequently used functions, pretty similar to what you would expect in a Microsoft product such as Word or PowerPoint. So here you're, you'll be able to access your clipboard, add structure to your course, and work on text and formatting. You can also arrange content on your page using the easy options in this menu as well. On the design tab, you have the ability to make global design modifications, such as selecting a theme or coming up with your own background and textile. On the insert ribbon, it's essentially where you would go to insert anything and everything into your course. And that includes text, image, medias, navigation, and interaction. We do also have a wide variety of things that you can choose from. So essentially anything that you would want to place in a course, it's more than likely here. We have the test and survey ribbon where you can add tests, surveys, questions, and forms. So our test section, uh, our, you can go ahead and add that into your course when you're using the design wizard or if you're working on a blank title, you can come out here and add one in as well. We do have a couple different question types, most of them relaying information back to your learning management system and we'll talk about those later. But we also have form elements that you can use if you wanted to recreate a simulation like entering in a particular document or, or something along those lines. On the tools menu, you have access to your Lectora Inspire tools and we also have variable resource and translation managers. This is usually once you become a little bit more comfortable with Lectora, you'll be able to use those um, and to make sure that you can 
uh, utilize the variables and resources that you have within your course. You do have the ability to take an English course and translate it into another language simply by pulling a document from the file and then sharing it with a translator and importing it back in. There will be a little bit of fudging that you'll need to do just to make sure everything looks right because um, English is the shortest language of all of the languages out there pretty much. Um, but there are also uh, some other things that you can do to, to make that process go smoothly as well. We do have some error checking and review tools such as spell check, just things that you would normally um, want within something that you're going to be doing text-based content. On our view tab, you can go ahead and view the different modes that Lectora has. And this is really where you can um, develop your course to the fullest. So once you have something done, you'll go from edit into run mode just to see how the functionality is working. And then you can also preview it, which is where you would access it um, somewhat like you would as a, as a learner. The only difference is, is that you're not using a learning management system, you're using your local computer and Lectora to just run the content. Once you're ready to really robustly look at the content, you can go ahead and use the um, browser mode and share your content out into your browser. It is a one-page view, but it just gives you the look um, of how it will look and appear on the page, and then you can always publish it out to HTML and view the full course that way, or publish it out into your um, learning management system and start your review there. One of the more important areas as well is the, is the left-hand pane. This is referred to as the Title Explorer, and it's essentially where you can access anything and everything regarding your course. The Title Explorer gives you a, an outlined view of chapters, sections, and pages. One of the more important things to note is that Lectora works on a book metaphor, meaning that um, your course is considered a book, and then each chapter within your book is a section of content that you would that you would want to share with your learner, and then you would also have pages or individual um, uh, views that you would be able to share with your learner as well. The Title Explorer is also a great place to uh, visually be able to see what's going on in your course as well. From here, you can actually drag and drop items. You can um, do different things with visibility and inheritance as well. So the way that I like to think of the Title Explorer is I go back into medieval times and I think of the title level as being the queen. And the queen can essentially um, bark down the orders all the way down the line. So essentially anything that you place up into this title level is actually going to be shared in every single page or chapter thereafter. If you have a chapter, it's kind of like a lord or a lady. They have a little bit of a rule, but nothing um, in comparison to the queen. The queen is always going to to uh, be able to boss around the lord or lady, but what the, the lord or lady can do is they can actually boss around the peasant or your page. So if you think of it that way, um, pages are not going to uh, be able to dictate what happens in a chapter or a title, but you can do um, titles dictate what happens in, into a chapter, and chapters can dictate what you do into a page as well. So if you look at this little example that we have in the background of the page, you can see that we have uh, this image that's in the background, and uh, um, a character, some text, and also this uh, item as well. So if we open up the Title Explorer, we're actually on the Your Message page, and you can see that the background um, is the uh, is inherited from the title level, and then we added a whiteboard onto the page and added a character, Catania. We have callouts and points. So these are all individual items that are on the page. However, the background image is there because it's um, at, at a higher level. And within your title you, or your title explorer, you can also see what exactly each item is by uh, the little icons that are available. So you can see that this whiteboard is an image, Catania is a character, the column out as a shape and the points are text. You can change the names at any time so you have a naming convention that makes sense to you or you can create one at your company um, so there's a universal naming standard. If the title explorer is a little bit too much and you just want to be able to briefly go through your course, you can change it over to thumbnail view which gives you a more visual view of your course content somewhat similar to PowerPoint. 
You also have your content area, and this is essentially where you can build and design your course. You can drag and drop media and resources in, rearrange and resize objects, use grids and guides to help with exact placement. You can also get into any item's properties at any time by selecting something and right-clicking. And you do have the ability to place things outside of the borders in case you don't um, necessarily want it to be seen, maybe you want it transitioned in, or you're not sure if you want to include it into your course quite yet. The Media Library is a nice little place for you to be able to access some media files. There are four different tabs with Lectora Inspire. Your title resources is anything and everything within the particular title that you're working on. This is especially nice if you want to be able to add a piece of content onto multiple different pages, but you don't necessarily always want to go and find it in the File Explorer. Here you have a little preview image and you can go ahead and just drag it into your course again on that page um, that you would want. It. You also have a place where you can set up a library of content. So in your library you can have things such as templates and library objects. Maybe you're interested in adding some coding into your courses or you're working specifically with uh, WCAG or 508 compliant templates. You can download those and, and have them into your library as well. We do offer some things in the stock library to get you started with that development, really trying to keep you within the product without having to venture out too far. And that includes buttons, character poses, clip art, flash activities, media online, music, and status indicators. And with Lectora Inspire, you have your Inspire tools, and this is where you're going to be able to access your eLearning Brothers template library. Once you sign in for the first time, it'll continuously remember who you are, and once you slide that open, you'll be able to quickly access the template library to get a hold of templates, cut out peoples, and some stack out assets as well. And then you can also select the Interaction Builder if you want to go ahead and check that out and use it as well. So that kind of goes over the interface and getting started. I'm going to go ahead and pause right here and check the questions area. If you have any questions, go ahead and share them with us now. I'm going to go ahead and pause for a drink and um, make sure that any of your questions are answered before we move forward. All right, I'm not seeing anything coming in, so I'm going to go ahead and move forward. Again, if you have any questions at any point in time, feel free to ask them in the question section, and I'll keep an eye out to make sure that I'm answering them as we go. So like I mentioned, you can use themes within your course just to help with the process. There are some that are preloaded and you can also download them from various places, including the eLearning Brothers Online. Essentially, a theme is a grouping of objects that help with a specific look and feel of a course and usually include something like a background image, buttons, and maybe a couple other contextual items. So here you can see that the majority of the content on this page is gold. We also have a purple version. And here's a blue version of it as well. And here's some more examples. I'll just quickly go through them just so you have a, an idea of what you have to get started. Um, maybe keep in mind if you want to uh, test out one of these ones in particular, you can go ahead and look for it while you're in Lectora. With Lectora, like I had mentioned in your working area, you do have the ability to drag and drop media directly from your computer into your Lectora workspace. This is really helpful if you have a um, process at the beginning of your course development where you're required to get your resources around or maybe approval for purchase and so you place them all in one folder. Once you're ready, you can just drag them in and start moving them around in your course. This is also the point in time where you're going to directly insert objects from your insert ribbon. Again, your insert ribbon is your friend and it's essentially where you can find anything and everything that you want to add in. Lectora does support and convert audio to MP3 and video to MP4 just so that there's the best experience for the learner when content is published and viewed in HTML5. Speaking of audio and video, you do have a couple different options for adding content into your course. Uh, a lot of people have been using um, content that's out on YouTube and you can actually enter in a URL and stream a video live into your content or into your course and it looks something similar to this. They can go ahead and play the content. It doesn't really pop them out into the, the actual website and you can kind of control the experience to some, some extent. So now we're going to actually get into adding some interactivity into your course. We've talked about dragging and dropping the regular um, standard items. Text is just entering text block. Anything, uh, if you're familiar with anything uh, such as word processing documents, presentation documents, or other authoring tools, the text is pretty much the same. 
But with uh, buttons, you can really start adding, adding that interactivity into your course and, and making it into um, an experience for the learner to remember. We have four different button types that you can choose from, the first being a text button. Really great name because it's essentially a text that's a button. So you can go ahead and change the shape or, or use um, standard shapes if you so choose. You can change the style of it, add some effects, uh, customize the text in particular, and we also have the ability to include states. Uh, so states, in case anybody is not familiar, is, is a UI ability to be able to change the way that the person interacts with an object when they're um, in, in a browser. So essentially, you, if we look at these, you can see that if I roll over them, click them, or interact with them, they're going to change slightly, and that's all because each one has states included. We also have some stock buttons available in the, the stock library in case you're interested. They're sorted by color and then um, mostly include navigation uh, items that you can use as well. Transparent buttons are pretty neat because they give you the ability to um, fake interactivity in a way. So uh, in this particular case, we add a transparent button onto the page and it'll originally show up as this light blue button. Um, this is only because you need to see it while you're developing. However, when you run it or publish it, it's not going to be viewed um, any longer. So you can change the shape and then place it over a, an interaction or um, a simulation of some sort. So in this particular example, we have a timer and we place the button over the start or stop mode in edit mode and then we run or publish it and you can see that when I uh, move over into the start or stop area, it actually turns into something that we can click. That uh, brings up a pop-up button that is based on an action that we placed on there. So you can include instructions in your course on uh, on interacting with a screenshot um, of a program or something along those lines uh, and really make uh, the, the interactivity in your course expand. We also have image buttons which gives you the ability to upload uh, images to create. Maybe you have a graphic designer on staff, lucky you, or you found something online to be able to download. And you can go ahead and insert those button, those images in and use them as a button. Um, and with that, you can also use it uh, in different states, such as normal, down, over, and disabled. And you can see that uh, here we have our little example. Here's the disabled state. When I don't do anything with it, it's just normal. If I roll over it, you'll see that there's a little bit of an outline. If I click it, it changes colors, um, just so you can have a little bit more interactivity. So let's take a look at an example of a button, just so you have um, a, a clear idea of what's going on. In this particular example, Probably the one of the first things that you're going to think of when you think of a button is your exit button and your next button. But what you're probably not thinking about is that there's other buttons on the page as well. And if you think about those button types, you might be able to figure it out. If you can figure it out, feel free to put it in the questions area. I'm curious. We'll go a little bit slow just to give you an, a chance to, to participate if you want to. So this page essentially says, use the activity on this page to learn about cooking meat at safe temperatures. As a learner, I can deduce that this is an image, so there's probably not anything I need to do in here. So I actually need to interact with this item over here. So you can see that we have an interaction going on, um, and we're talking about cooking meat. And when I look on this page, you can see that the the meat actually changes and this is because there's image buttons on the page so the pork goes from cooked to uncooked or uncooked to cooked we also have poultry poultry and beef and on top of that when i click on it content shows so now we're being able to share more information in particular about pork with flooding the page with a whole bunch of text and also giving them a visual ability to associate what temperature we need to have the uh, pork cooked at for it to be um, considered to be done. Same with poultry and with beef. The only difference with this one is that beef usually comes into a, a couple different versions of rarity. So it says it recommends the specific temperatures for what you're um, trying to cook it at. So if we click on these, you'll again see that they're buttons, this time text buttons, and when we click on them, we can see the different temperatures that are necessary to get the level of doneness in a steak or um, other type of beef application.
So that's a really good example of showing multiple different ways of including um, a button onto the page and then have, having some interactivity onto the course instead of just throwing bullet points at your learner. We also do have uh, status trackers or uh, status indicators, sorry, blank there for a minute. Um, a status indicator is essentially something that you can add onto your course that's a visual aid and it gives the learner the ability to see their progress throughout a course. And the example that we have on the left is the Chinese tea culture. And just knowing from this particular course, I know that this menu includes status indicators. So you can see that there are these images here on the left hand side. And essentially what it means is that the introduction page has been completed because the tea has been completely um, uh, prepared and is ready to drink. You can see that the page that we're on, there's, there's a little remnants of the tea leaves and some water. It might be a little hard to see, but essentially it's not a complete brew of tea quite yet. And we haven't even gotten to the assessment yet because they're just tea leaves. So this is essentially an example of a custom status indicator that you can add into your course at any time. We do also have some stock status indicators that you can use as well. Some of the examples are on the bottom of the screen. I'm going to ask that you right now pick your favorite and keep an eye on it. The first thing that you're going to see is not started. And then when we go ahead and click through the uh, particular page, it'll actually change to in progress. And then once it's completed, we'll go ahead and see a completed status as well. So that's just some of the example of the status and stock status indicators that we have within the product. When it comes to, to quizzing or testing your learner, you do have quite a bit of um, variety in Lectora Inspire. We have nine gradable questions, including the one seen on the screen in the screenshot, and then three that are non-gradable. When you add a question into your course for the first time, you're actually going to use the question creator. It's essentially a wizard that gives you the ability to enter in information on how you want your question to appear on the page. You can rename your question, assign it a points value, add in your question text, pick what uh, particular choices that you want, and pick what choices are the correct answer. You can also associate an image to your question or an image to the answer. Um, and randomize your choices if, if you want to. From here, you can also choose some additional options like feedback. Um, if you feel it's necessary for your learner to know how they're doing as you go along, you can actually enable feedback either on process of the question or immediately. And you can use a couple different functionalities like changing features or showing particular items on the page um, if they were correct or incorrect with their question, uh, question answering. You can also set the number of attempts. This is usually something that a lot of people who deal in compliance like to do. So you can set the maximum number of times that a person is allowed to take the test. Maybe from there you give them instructions on an additional course that they would need to take because they haven't passed that level um, of understanding. It's really up to you, but that is another option that is available as well. So if we go ahead, we're going to uh, just take a quick sample test so you can see all of these gradable options in action. So the instructions say that we're going to go through nine general knowledge questions. While I know the answer to most of them, I am going to fail some on purpose just so you can see the difference. And uh, the nine questions that are in this test represent the nine graded question types that are available in Lectora. For this particular test, we need to pass with at least a score of 75%, which is something that you can update in your test properties um, as to your passing threshold. The first example is a true and false, relatively simple um, question type that most uh, other applications have. So you have your question and your question type. When you enter in the question, you can go ahead and select submit, and then we can see the feedback appear on the screen. We have our multiple choice with one answer. Again, we included some images on the page to go with the answers just to give it a little bit of uh, extra interest. And when we submit, we can see that feedback again. For multiple or multiple question, multiple response, you can go ahead and select something, uh, a question that has more than one answer. This one I always get wrong, but I always try and do it on purpose. <laughs> And then we also have a fill in the blank where you can select in it and you have a, a text block that you can go ahead and answer the question in. If you want to limit it down to just numerical answers, you can go ahead and have a number entry as well. 
and then we have the ability to match items. So essentially you pick a row of items um, to show up on one side and a row of items to show up on the other. You can have all right answers with uh, right options or you can also include distractors as well. So you can really customize it as much as you want to. So I'm going to go ahead and start clicking through. You can see that when I select the different areas, they connect and um, they're matched and gives the learner uh, the ability to see what they've submitted. We also have the ranker sequence, and this is where you can essentially place something into a ranker sequence order. Um, in this particular example, it's everything from the distance of the sun. I'm not even going to attempt to answer this one. I'm going to fail on purpose just to kind of speed this through. And you can see we go on ahead and selected all of them and got our feedback. There's also a drag and drop option where you select um, what particular item you want to drag or drop and then select a drop zone to place it into. This question is asking about three primary colors. You can see that this is selected. Here's an example of distractors. We have orange as well, which we know is not a primary color. And then we also have green, which you can select. Also not a primary color, but we know blue and yellow are. And it also doesn't matter in which order you place these in because it all of these have been deemed as correct, um, but you can set them to only be able to go into specific areas if you want to. The final example is a hotspot, and this is especially helpful if you're working on something such as um, a simulation, or you want to go ahead and test the learner to make sure that they know where something is on the page in particular. So this particular question is asking where the Great Barrier Reef can be found. I know it's in Australia on my list of places I want to go, I can go ahead and submit and see that that is correct. At this point, I can go ahead and submit the test as well, and you'll see that some, um, some results are showing. With Lectura Inspire 16, we did introduce some new customized test results. So on here, you can really customize anything and everything that you want to show the learner. Um, this one includes pretty much um, a, a lot of the options that are out there. So you can have the, the test name. Um, it's also been italicized and, and changed in color. We have the correct over total count. We can see that each question is, has a correct or incorrect um, notification as well as an image and has been recolored. You can see that when I answered incorrectly, we can show the learner their answer and then show what the correct answer actually is. If your company is a little bit more strict, maybe you're concerned about uh, cheating or anything along those lines, you don't need to give them what their answer was or what the correct answer was if you don't want to. These are just all options you can include in your test. The next thing that you would probably want to take into consideration um, is adding some more interactivity into your course. And one of the easiest things that you can do is to add actions onto items. So pretty similarly to a button, you would need something that happens when that button is clicked. So with each action, you can launch a pop-up window, navigate to a page, display question feedback, hide and show objects. It's really up to you. And one of the nice things about Lectora is uh, it includes probably the most robust offering of actions on the market. And so with that, you can create whatever you can imagine. Actions is one of those things where a lot of people can get tripped up. And if you think of it logically and in three steps, it's pretty easy. When you're adding an action onto the page, you're going to follow the steps of adding a trigger, adding an action, and adding a target. Essentially, we're going to go from left to right on this action up pane up here um, and fill in the information as necessary. We can customize the name to uh, show exactly what we want it to, to, to be in our title explorer. And then from there, we can go ahead and enter in the first part of the action, which is the trigger. So the trigger is essentially what is happening that is going to make this action happen. So you can have an action on almost every single level within your course. Um, not, I don't, there's, 
You can place things at the title level, so if you want something to show on every single page, you can if you, if you found it necessary. You can also do it at chapter level, at page level, and at object level, such as buttons, images, text, and so forth and so on. So with your trigger, you're going to pick the one that makes the most sense. Most people like uh, to use the hide and show options, those are, are relatively standard. Mouse click is also standard as well, because you have your buttons and your clicking while you're on, on the web. You can also do mouse enter and mouse exit. So if you remember back to our example of the cooked meat, um, that was actually changing on mouse enter and on mouse exit as well. You can also do things with your keyboard and there's a couple other options such as touch screen like swiping left and right um, if you plan on creating something for mobile accessibility. From there, you would go ahead and select the action that you want to happen. This is the this is the thing that is going to, to take place. Do you want um, when a button is clicked for your learner to navigate somewhere, to interact with an object, to do commands? The list goes on and on, and you can see that it scrolls down quite a bit. So make sure you check all those out and get yourself familiar. In this example, when we mouse enter, we're actually going to be showing something. And in this case, we're going to do the spoon text rectangle. So we have the setup of this particular action. So let's see the interaction example um, that's associated with it. So you could, if you remember from, from the action that we just did, we were talking about spoon text. What we did is we added a mouse enter action. That's reiterated with the instructions, which says to roll over the image before or below to read about each of the following. So if we roll into the wooden spoon, we should essentially see the wooden spoon text. And there it is. And when we exit out, it also uh, disappears because another action was added onto it as well. And that has been repeated across all of these different objects. And it um, gives you both a visual and textual way to explain things without having to show everything on the page all at once. When you're adding images into your course, you do have the ability to add some image effects. Essentially, we're just trying to make it so you really don't need to get out of Lectora unless you need to. With images, once you add them in, you can um, crop them, resize them, rotate them, uh, mirror them, add border weights, change the opacity, maybe you want to add some shadows and reflections, uh, and we do have a cropping feature that's pretty simple as well. Otherwise, you can use your Lectora-inspired tool, Snagit, to complete those as, um, if, you, if you want to. We have some modern effects and transitions that you can add into your course. I usually associate these with your introduction page or splash page, but really you can put them anywhere and everywhere in your course. So essentially a transition is just a way for an object or page to appear and disappear in a particular way. We have transition and transition out. Here's a couple examples of the transitions, pretty reminiscent of some um, Microsoft products, but a, a a couple different things that you might not have seen before. We also have some effects, so you can have them um, swing in or suddenly come in um, or bounce in if you want to. It's really up to you. From here, you can also change uh, the delay if you want an anything to happen on a delay timer or the speed. And you can also choose where an object would transition in from or if we're on the out, out tab, transi transition out to. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this uh, little example so we can at least see it in action. When you look at the page, you're going to see text and image kind of scooting in and out of the screen. And all it is is um, a uh, the text and image on the screen formatted to a particular font type or font style with a transition uh, added into each one, at least in some of them out. Um, and so we had a couple different examples of the ones that are out there, but it just gives you an idea of um, some of the things that you can do within Lectora without really needing to get into any like flash animations or anything along those sorts. You can also add a character into your course if you want to. Uh, your character gives you the ability to host your training or um, offer a level of uh, familiarity with a, a fellow worker, maybe you want to use this particular person as a representation um, of what you do at your company. 
Matora does come with, uh, I believe it's 16, I can never remember the exact number, of preloaded characters. With Lectora, Inspire, and your access to the eLearning Brothers Cutout People Library, I, I, I want to say that their number right now is somewhere around 300 people that you can choose from. Um, they have varying ages, races, uh, careers, um, uh, people with disabilities. I mean, there's just a whole bunch of different options you can choose from if you uh, go into your Inspire Tools, open up your Cutout People library and download somebody from there. With the, the nice thing about the ones that are included in Lectora is that we actually include an action that you can change people quite easily. So for example, you can see that Jessica is on our screen. This is one of our stock characters and she has the pose of waving um, um, currently enabled and by adding on an action called a set character pose we can actually change her image uh, so that it appears differently on the screen so the button has an, has an action on it that on mouse click set the character pose to the OK sign pointing left pointing right sad thinking thumbs down thumbs up waving and writing so you can capture a lot of those uh, particular actions that might be happening at your company um, or to show feedback while you're going through a course like I said with Lectora Inspire and that eLearning Brothers subscription you're going to get access to a whole bunch more the only thing is is that you're going to um, you're not going to have access to those character poses if your company is interested in social learning, we do have a couple social widgets that you can add into your title specifically for Twitter, Facebook, and Google. So you can go ahead and check those out if you want to. For those of you who may be working on courses that need to adhere to Section 508 or WCAG, com uh, stand WCAG compliant standards, uh, we are compliant with the law and offer that ability. Essentially, we prepare your title for accessibility um, and it's just going to disable certain features that are not considered compliant um, and also prompt you to do certain things like add closed captioning to audio and video. If you want to learn more about that, make sure you talk to somebody um, at Trivena, such as your sales representative. We have ebooks, webinars, articles, um, a lot of different resources out there because we understand that it, it's a, a pretty complicated field to navigate. Like I had mentioned before, with Lectora um, Inspire, you do get access to a review link. With other versions of Lectora, you will as well. Um, but with Inspire, we actually give you the ability to host a, up to 50 courses at no extra cost. So essentially, when you're publishing a course in Lectora, you can directly send it to a review link. And then from there, you can share it with an unlimited number of reviewers. Your reviewers don't need to um, have access to your learning management system. They just need to click a link and sign in uh, and give you feedback on your course. If you happen to be working with authoring tools other than Lectora Inspire, maybe you're adding Lectora into your tool belt um, or you're working for various different companies as a contractor and you need to have each one available to you, you can use ReviewLink for uh, uploading and reviewing Storyline story and Captivate content as well. So I just want to just quickly show you an example. This is a course that was imported in and you can see that we have the screen view um, of the course so you can see what the content will be. The learner will be able to interact with it like they would any other course. But they also do have the ability to add comments. You can see your comment threads. You'll get status updates if you so choose. You can respond to that. You can add an attachment and you can also mark something as fixed. If you are required to have all of your feedback documented, you can also download it as a PDF and, and place it into your file. But it's a really quick and easy process um, in comparison to publishing something out to your learning management system, having them open PowerPoint, take screenshots, add um, text, and maybe the callouts of some sort to, to kind of give the developer an idea of where the course is, or actually having to sit down in hour-long conversations going through the course page by page. When you're finally ready to work with your course and you're ready to get it out there, um, maybe you wanted to do the review and review link, but now you're ready to put it in your learning management system, we do give you the ability to publish your content to web servers or HTML. 
a learning management system, essentially for AICC or SCORM compliant courses, and a learning record store if you if you plan on using XAPI, uh, Zappy, Tin Can, however you want to say it. Or you can also do offline applications. In some companies, it's required for people to um, share content maybe on the road. Uh, for example, I know of um, one client that does their training via CD because they're uh, out at sea. You can do things like that as well, depending on, on your needs at your particular company. When we're talking about learning management systems, I did want to briefly mention that we do have um, a, a learning management system here at Trivanus called CourseMill. And from CourseMill and Lectora, uh, you can import and export uh, things back and forth. So it makes it really easy for you to both host your content and um, make sure that you have your learners in there uh, and delivering SCORM compliant courses, tracking progress. We have a lot of great reporting tools that are available as well. So if you're interested, you can check out coursemill.com or talk to a sales representative or somebody at Trivantis um, to get some more information or maybe even schedule a demonstration. So I did want to reiterate that Lectora is a web-based publishing option that produces HTML5 content. That means that your uh, pages are going to be the most up-to-date with your browser, therefore alleviating some of um, the headache that you might have if you're working with an older browser version. You can also publish that content so it can be viewed across multiple devices, including tablets and smartphones. So it's a really nice um, thing if you're, if you're looking future forward or technology forward in, into those directions. The, so the last thing I'm going to do before I open it up for um, questions for the last five minutes is to really encourage you to join the Trivanus community, both because I'm the community manager and because I also feel that it's a great resource. We have some archived webinars, video tutorials, how-to courses, and you can connect with other users. Um, and it's really simple. All you have to do is go to community.trivanus.com and you'll see the content that's, that's out there. Uh, one of the things that I did want to briefly mention before I get, a, uh, get off the call or we switch over to questions is that if you go to the knowledge base area and then you come over into the categories and go to Lectora 101, there is a video series that you can watch out here that helps you get started and it's essentially everything you need to know. You can also view shared content in case you need some examples um, and you're trying to get some inspiration or you want to poke around in a course, you can actually go ahead and select something and then go ahead and download the Lectora file and use it from there as well. So that's it for me for this presentation of Lectora Inspire 16. I'm going to go ahead and stay on the line for the next four minutes. If you have any questions, please ask them in the questions box and I'll do my best to answer them. I'm going to go ahead and put myself on mute to let you guys kind of accumulate your thoughts and then I'll pop back on if any questions um, come up. Otherwise, you're free to go if you uh, are I'm looking to go to another meeting or something along those lines. Um, some of the questions may be helpful to you, so if you want to stick around, you can do that as well. <laughs> 